Oh Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. When we speak about addiction, many of us think that addiction is only to drugs and alcohol. But in reality, there are three types of addictive habits. The first type is addiction to substances like drugs, alcohol, tobacco. The second type, what we call impulsive or impulse control disorders, like stealing. Somebody can be addictive to stealing or gambling, pathological lying. And the third type of addictive habits, like behavior, behavioral addictions, like food, gluttony, screens, like phones, internet, video games, pornography, cutting. So, addiction can be either to substances or certain behavior or impulse control disorders. Addiction is characterized by craving, compulsion, I feel compelled, and inability to stop by exercising my own willpower. So, today actually I like to speak about addiction to screens like phones or internet or video games. And pornography actually is part of this addiction. Screens and internet in general has positives with negatives. Like anything, for example, the positives of the internet, you can search any topic and you will find answer to it. Whether, whether in science, in art, in culture, in, in, in any, in, if you, definitely in scripture, because n now even many books and many manuscripts, you can find them on the internet. So through few minutes, if you are looking for a certain subject, you can find it. Another actually positive about the internet that how the word of God through the internet is spread to every single place in the whole world. Before the internet, some countries banned the entry of the scripture or the Bible into these countries. 
you cannot, they will search you at the customs, and if they find a Bible or a Gbeya or any religious book, they will take it from you. But now, actually through the internet, the Bible and the Word of God is available everywhere and anywhere. And also, is available for free, commentaries for free. I remember when I was in your age, we were waiting for any commentary to be published from the Orthodox Church. Because until the early 70s, we didn't have any commentary in Arabic from Orthodox Church. And maybe the first one who started to publish commentary in Arabic, not translated to Arabic. Abu Namur Dawood used to translate from Protestant commentators. But the first one who actually started to publish from early church father was Abu Tadrus Ya'oub. And I remember we were saving from our allowance in order to be able to purchase these books and to study the scripture. Now all these commentaries are available at the touch of your finger, Arabic and English. Also, if you want to understand anything about our faith, doctrine, differences between different denominations, you don't have to buy any book. Just go search, you will find. Go into any Coptic Orthodox website and you will find a lot of resources. Also, the screens and the internet help it in, in our communication with each other. Now, some school servants and youth ministers, they have groups uh, together. They, send, they can chat, they send the messages, they can send uh, sermons, they can send hymns. You can learn hymns from many applications. So now the internet can be a useful way to uh, communicate with the youth, communicate with each other. So it's like a daily visitation, a daily nourishment by the word of God and the saying of the Father. Uh, also the internet actually now, uh, many people, especially during the time of COVID, many people did not leave their house, but they would do shopping, they, they did everything actually without leaving their houses. And even they start to do video meetings and video conferences. And this made, you know, people who are living far from any church to actually can attend any Bible study, any uh, youth meeting, if they are living three or four hours from the church. So facilitate uh, uh, communication with people. But on the other side, there are many negatives for the screens. One of the main negatives of the screens is the accessibility or the easy accessibility to pornography. Now actually, uh, even if you, you are not searching for pornography, many times when you look at any website, you'll find advertisement that actually offend your eyes. And some people, out of curiosity, they, they start to, to look at these websites and they became addict. Also, as I said in the beginning, internet and the screens are very, very addictive. Very addictive. Sometimes the last thing actually we take with us to our bed is the screen, the, your phones. And the first thing actually is your phone. During divine liturgy, all of us will become tempted to check our phones. 
and who are tempted to respond uh, to text messages or emails or to check our social media. This in itself a sign of addiction. Besides from health point of view, spending a lot of time in front of the screens can cause eye problems and also health problems in general. Our, back, our upper back pain actually is very common among those who use computer a lot because sitting like this can actually cause upper back pain. That's why in many companies, uh, for people who use computer for a long time, they don't give them discs like this. Actually, they make them stand and they put the disc on the same level of your face so you don't have to do like this uh, working on the computer. Uh, few years ago, the first reason of divorce was either sexual immorality, cheating on your spouse, or um, gambling. But now, actually, the first reason of divorce in, in many families is addiction of the internet. Because it makes people actually isolated socially. They don't connect. You are communicating with a person far away from you, but the person sitting next to you, you are not talking to him. So maybe you are in the same household, but we are very far from each other. Each one living in his virtual world. And this actually means separation between spouses uh, or, or the youth and his family. Sometimes you go and you visit, for example, your grandmother. And because your grandmother maybe is not using the, the internet like you. So you go and visit with her, but all the time you are looking at your phone and you are not enjoying spending few minutes with her. Also, as I told you, it's very easy to search any topic, but now actually there are very, very contradicting messages on the internet. And sometimes you are confused to know where the truth is. And all of us, we experience this during the time of COVID. You find many searches supporting vaccination and many researches against vaccination. Many people, you know, supporting, even in doctrines, uh, supporting certain theology and other people actually saying the opposite exactly. These people are using quotes from the scripture. These people are using quotes from scripture these people using from early church fathers, these are using from early church father, and when actually you read, you become so confused, which one would you believe? So, the abundance of information can be very risky. And this reminds me with a very wise advice that King Solomon mentioned in Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And he said, see how many, many years ago, but he said, my son, be admonished by this, of making many books, there is no end. That's what Solomon said some hundred years before Christ. He said, of making many books, there is no end. And much study 
is wearisome to the flesh. So when you start reading, 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 reading in these contradicting uh, messages, you will be so confused, so confused. And another negativity of the internet, some people try to find solutions for their issues through internet. This can work or can actually hurt you. For example, many people try to diagnose themselves by, for example, writing the, this, the symptoms they have and try to find the diagnosis. And then they come up, I think I have cancer in the stomach. Because he wrote some symptoms and it told them that's cancer. More serious than this, when you try to psychologically diagnose your friend or your father or your spouse if you're married, say, my husband is narcissistic personality disorder. My wife is borderline personality disorder. And then you start reading how to deal with narcissistic, how to deal with borderline. خلاص, you diagnosed him. Based on just some information you, 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 you read on the internet. So these are some of the negatives. And I see you are laughing because all of us, we do this, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> so, we need actually to understand how to deal wisely with the screens in order not to fall into these negatives in order to benefit from it, but without falling into these negatives. Uh, like every other area in our life, when we surrender to God and rely on Him, God can give us strength to overcome whatever it is that is consuming us, even if it is addictive habit. One of the beautiful verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. This verse tells us, Many facts. The first fact, God, God is faithful. And he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. What does this mean? This means the Holy Spirit who lives in you. Christ with whom you are united in every liturgy when you take communion. The Father to whom you cry and you say, Our Father who art in heaven. The Holy Trinity actually, they can turn away from you any temptation that you cannot put up with or you cannot endure. But the verse actually is saying something else. Even if you are tempted and out of weakness you allowed this sin to over control you, God will have a way 
and will provide a way for you to escape and to be free. Yes, through the grace of God, you can break free from these addictive habits and turn to God. So, allow God to work in you. Allow God to work in you and to deliver you from this addiction. But it, how this, how to allow God? It starts by this very simple point. You need to admit it to God. So this process of getting you free or setting you free from smoking, from alcohol, from drug abuse, from internet, from gambling, from compulsive eating, from anything, it starts by admitting it to God. As you heard in the Bible, in the Gospel this morning, if you admit your sin, you will not have, if you admit your blindness, you will not have any sin. But because you deny your blindness, your sin remains. When you admit it, God will hear and provide you with a way out. It can come, the way out, in a form of guidance from your spiritual father. Or God will give you strength to be able to say no. He will strengthen your willpower. Or God you will give you another focus that can distract you from the addictive behavior. Just surrender yourself to God. God's desire is to guide and to direct your steps when you turn to him. But in practical way, what does this mean when I'm dealing with the screens? There is a principle based on a verse from the scripture. The principle says, select and reject. Select and reject. Meaning what? As St. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21, test all things, hold fast what is good. Test all things, hold fast what is good? So you need to be able to distinguish between right and wrong, good and bad, righteous and evil, sound doctrine, falsehood. This is what we call the, the virtue of discernment. St. Anthony the Great said, any virtue that you practice without discernment can turn into a vice. Any virtue that you practice without discernment can turn into a vice. And the Holy Trinity can give us the ability to discern between right and wrong. And this is one of the signs of the spiritual maturity. If you read Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, St. Paul said, Solid food belongs to those who are of full age, mature. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So when you are spiritually mature, you will be able to discern between what is right and what's wrong. St. Paul prayed for his congregation in Ephesians, very beautiful prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. And I hope that we can 
pray the same prayer for us and for others. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I like when he asked for the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of enlightenment. So we need to ask God to give us wisdom to enlighten our understanding so that we can differentiate and distinguish between good and evil. The same meaning he mentioned in Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10. And this I pray, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. Why? Why he is praying that we abound in discernment. Verse 10, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. The Arabic is clearer than the English in verse 10. In Arabic, it says, حتى تميزوا الأمور المتخالفة. What does it mean? To be able to discern the contradicting messages. So you, you will be able to know what is good and what is wrong, or evil, what's right and what's wrong in these contradicting messages. As I told you, when we are spiritually mature, we will be able to judge everything. That's exactly what St. Paul mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 15, when he said, he who is spiritual judges all things. Judges means he is able to say, this is chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 20, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. So the Holy Spirit who anoints us will teach us and will know everything. And in verse 27 from chapter 2, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. So, number one, the Holy, the Holy Trinity will give us the ability to distinguish between right and wrong, the ability for discernment. But is this enough? No. Maybe I know it is wrong, but I am tempted to choose what's wrong. So the Holy Trinity will give us also the ability to do what's right. So number one, the Holy Trinity will give me the ability to choose what is, to discern between what's right and what's wrong. Then the Holy Trinity will give me the ability to do what is right. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. So I, I will be led by the Spirit of God. In Romans 8 and 37, He says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So we are conquerors. We can actually do what's right through the grace of God. I can do all things in Jesus Christ who strengthens me. St. Paul said, when the Lord told him, My grace is sufficient for my power is made perfect in weakness. So he said, when I am weak by myself, then I am strong through the grace of God. 
So the Holy Trinity, number one, will give me the gift of discernment. Number two, will give me the gift of uh, victory. I will be able to defeat any bad habit, any addictive habit. And number three, actually, the Holy Trinity